Welcome back to Left Anchor. I'm Ryan Cooper. And I'm Alexi the Greek. And today we're very pleased to have Liza Featherstone with us, a wonderful person we've been wanting to have on for such a long time, uh, advice columnist for The Nation, staff writer for Jacobin, been published as a writer and author in many publications that you've probably read before, uh, author of three books, I believe. Is that right? It's about right. Is it yeah, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> and I know the, the most recent, I believe, depends, is... Defi- depends what you mean by book. Yeah, it depends, author, sure. And, right, because yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a yeah. little bit fuzzy. There's editing, there's authoring, there's... Yeah, I like that. That's good. So you can correct me and, and add whatever I, I leave out. Um, but three is a rough wish. number, yeah. Uh, rough, rough. Yeah, the most recent, I think is Divining Desire, Focus Groups in the Culture of Consultation. Is that right? Yeah, and that's a real book, and I really am the author. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. wonderful. And so, so the piece that we wanted to open with was one that, um, I don't know if you've gotten any flack for, but we thought might uh, at least generate some good conversation because, you know, there's there's ideological differences. I think many of our listeners, if not most of them, are probably uh, Bernie supporters or Warren supporters in some you know, measure one and two, perhaps. Uh, But, you know, I I think probably, again, most of our listeners are, as insofar as they understand it, against neoliberalism, probably were not thrilled about Hillary Clinton as the last nominee. Um, But then there's the epistemological problem of, you know, to the far left, is Bernie a real leftist? Is he actually socialist? And then is Warren, um, you know, just an evil capitalist? Or as, as you rightly pointed out, somebody who favors capitalism and she doesn't really own the means of production. Uh, <laughs> That's right? so funny. Yeah, it was great. Right? Uh, and so, so there's there's a lot of uh, questions for people on the left who are pretty sure about what their principles are and what they want ideologically to figure out who do we trust, who are they really, can we trust what they say? And so I thought this is a really great piece because it says, you know what, sometimes questions about who people associate with and uh, what class background they come from is highly relevant to figuring that out, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So if you wouldn't mind, just tell us a little bit about uh, the piece and, and uh, why you wrote it and, and what your thoughts were. Um, sure. Well, the, um, first of all, I guess to 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 back up, um, we uh, we uh, at at Jacobin we kind of um, we we go back and forth on how much to criticize Elizabeth Warren um, because she could she could certainly be the Democratic nominee um, and um, and. If she were, she would certainly not be the worst person in history who has <laughs> been the Democratic nominee, right? I mean, it, it, there have just really been a lot worse people, and the fact that she's even in a uh, somebody like her who is basically a good liberal um, um, is um, is in that position is in large part um, a, a feature of the fairly robust left and progressive um, organizing um, moment that we're in right now. Um, so I so I, I had written an earlier piece in Jacobin arguing that um, rather than uh, r- rather than call her a neoliberal, um, which she uh, is obviously not um, precisely true, um, we should you know recognize that she's a good liberal and take credit for that. Uh, you know, saying it's all g- good work on us, good job left. That that, that someone <laughs> that someone who is a good liberal yeah. is even um, is even in this race in addition to Bernie. Um, and of course, we should also. Um, staunchly oppose her and um, campaign for the um, nomination of Bernie Sanders instead, because um, you know we should just be precise about um, what she is and is not. And in that in that same piece, I did make fun of her um, because she does she calls herself a capitalist, and I think that's funny because I I know that it sounds like such a like a Marxist nerd point, you know that oh well she doesn't own the we means of production, but it's true that that is what a capitalist is um, and I'm sure she has some investments or whatever like a lot of people but that's not quite right um, and um, and I think it's it's telling that she would say something so imprecise because she is a very smart professorial legal mind like and and yeah. so and, right. and and to be like 
I'm a capitalist, meaning that you believe in capitalism is kind of a dumb undergrad thing to say. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and so so, yeah. so it, it's sort of telling like both um, how um, like it's 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 sort of telling that this is a a point of passion for her. You know that she would so lose her you know rational, right. precise, professorial self. Elizabeth Warren knows perfectly well what a capitalist really is. You know. Um, and, and yet she's so enthusiastic on this point that she would um, that she would say something that is actually so weird and wrong. Um, so that's it's uh, so that's it sounds trivial, but it's not. Um, and um, and and so from that we see a lot of um, a lot of other. Uh, of course, um, re- much more than semantic differences between her and Bernie Sanders. We see that um, that she has um, really goes back and forth on um, the nature of what a single health care plan should look like, whether there should be private insurance or not, um, and um, um, and and a lot of other things that would have a, um, a, a, tr- a tremendous um, impact. Um, the um, so in this recent piece, though, um, I th- I thought it was I thought it was important to um, to look at um, her, um, you know, the the people that are uh, um, the people that we associate with every day really do shape our way of thinking about things. Um, her daughter, Amelia Tayagi. Um, is like not just a close family member, but somebody that she's co-authored several books with, um, and um, and 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 Amelia Tayagi um, has um, w- was a, f- a founder of a healthcare co- um, consulting company, and is now that um, and is now with um, another consulting company that has an, a, a, a vast number of terrible um corporate clients um and um, she also um, worked for a while at mckinsey which is um which is which which is which is widely responsible for um for, for a lot of the current neoliberal way of doing business a lot of laid off workers owe their misfortunes to um advice that their companies got from um from mckinsey it's just like one of the worst um, consultancies there is, and you know, consultant consulting in general is is terrible. I mean, they're always just like telling companies how to exploit workers more, um, but it's a particularly bad one. So this is so I thought you know this doesn't make Elizabeth Warren bad, and like lots of people like like we should we shouldn't uh, of course it's I'm not trying to be moralistic about it that um you know it's like you, you know you don't want to judge people on their associates um uh, but um but you should know who these people are spending time with every day because especially for um people who are so um intellectually minded like as we know Elizabeth um, Warren is um they um they their their compa- our companions really shape our ideas um, you know and yeah. so so that's like it, so i i felt like you know it was it, it it was relevant um to um it was relevant to point it out and 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 make uh, make a note of it i also pointed out that um kamala harris's husband is a um, is a corporate lawyer who um who has um some amazing cases um all, all of almost all of which are um defending corporations against um people who most likely have a legitimate beef against them including wage and hour and overtime um so um so that's and um i haven't seen actually that reported anywhere i, I haven't actually seen either thing reported but the tayagi information had been going on the internet for a while before i wrote about it so um it, like the in- that the internet in general deserves credit more than i do i just put it in a column <laughs> um but the um the kamala harris thing i i i i found and was like that's interesting and i, I imagine people fear being sexist you know going after like you know going after a woman for her because of her husband and and i understand i understand that but in the context once again when you're thinking about 
who do we spend every day with and what kind of um, what kind of um, impact do those people have on our worldview? I think we have to acknowledge that it's at least worth mentioning. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> yeah, and it, well, so I guess this this gets into the sort of like the second order question, right? Because you know you have these sort of loci of of potential like like vectors of corruption, I guess, to say mm-hmm. that. That, you know, like this person, you know, their, their friends or family members are, are, you know, associated with like kind of questionable institutions. But then that, that, that brings you to the, uh, you know, the, like, the, you know, is that relationship going to make them do bad things, right? Yeah. And, and we don't know. Yeah. Except, yeah. except we sort of have some idea because, um, because, we have this incredibly um, um, complicated back and forth with Elizabeth Warren's um, health care policy. I mean, it is like it seems like this whole campaign has been um, such a challenge to um, for people to get her to clarify what it is exactly. And so um, some some days it's amazing. She seems to be for single payer. And some days she seems to be saying um, that she wouldn't um, abolish private health care companies. And that's literally not what single payer is. Like, it just means, you know, you want to have more Obamacare or something. I mean, which is like, uh, again, you know, better than some things, but like worse than a lot of other possibilities. Um, so it, it's like very, um, so... I wouldn't. I wouldn't say you can't draw a direct line of causality to be um, because her daughter is in these situations. Um, but it is. Um, but it, it's. It's certainly. It's. It's certainly the case that um, the sort of class habitus of people who like work in these kinds of jobs and are consultants and, you know, think and talk a certain way and have certain, um, bottom line priorities and certain values. I mean, those are going to rub off on the people around them. And, you know, like I live in New York city, I see that happen all the time, you know, and, and, you know, and, and people in DC say the same thing about, um, you know, a, a terrible neoliberal politics. You know, it just like it, it spreads socially like a uh, germ, yeah. like germs. No, you know? it, it is, you're, I think it's so true about where we get our values from and where how we are formed. I mean, this goes back to I mean ancient Greek philosophy. Like association breeds assimilation, right? Like who you associate, you become more like them. Um, and I think it's a little different with uh, Kamala Harris because when yeah. I hear. Uh, Kamala Harris speak, that sounds to me exactly like the fact that she's married to a corporate lawyer. It, you know what it I mean? totally like, does. It fits perfectly. It, it was, so, so, it's really so, sort of a non-story, it, though just, I thought it was interesting. No, no, yeah. it, it is, because yeah, it's, it's not a evidence. surprise. Yeah. It, it's yeah. like further evidence of things we already know from her very own statements, from her own history and record. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. so what's interesting about Elizabeth Warren is like people want to believe I don't know, maybe because she says some things that are super progressive in some ways. And, uh, you know, you, you have the neoliberals like Matt Iglesias even arguing in, in very stupid ways, I think, that, that she's actually leftier than Bernie, which is really dumb. Oh, this, but, has, been a, like, this has been an interesting <laughs> argumentative antic that I've noticed among some of yeah, her supporters. So, right, <laughs> I right, mean, it really right, is so, like, so, I mean... It, so yeah. they claim the mantle, right? They claim the mantle of, no, she's the leftist, okay? Yeah. And so when, when we bring in this kind of evidence about not just her daughter, but this co-author on things where I think I saw one of their 2004 books actually had a passage I saw on Twitter about you know we're not shooting for anything socialist like those Scandinavian countries or something oh yeah effect, oh yeah right? that's another right? thing it, yeah, yeah. it's not a good book but anyway yeah okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so but then 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 there's this dissonance and then it's like because I think your point isn't don't just assume that people that associate with these people are irredeemably bad and corrupt and neoliberal but in, indeed like we have to ask questions yeah. because of this right yeah and so th- that dissonance is more interesting to me like I absolutely I think our audience our, our audience has written off Kamala Harris yeah. long ago no no we yeah. don't right? we, we don't we don't really care about her um I I, I agree um um the I, th- I think I yeah I think I think that's right and um, as far as you know um, I th- I think it's what I'm also what I'm saying in that piece is not 
Um, it, not that the not that there is some sort of corruption here, or that it's like, or or that there's, or even that, you know, um, th- that there would be conflicts of interest. It's it's not sort of journalistic in that way. It's more sort of um, of, of a sociological point that you know we um, we, we like we influence each other. You got to ask who are they hanging out with. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. They, they, yeah. They might think she, she might think she's doing good. She think actually she said that capitalism is a force for good if you do it right, basically. Yes. And so that yeah. that totally fits with exactly. her, her daughter, right? Exactly. Right. Like she and and that's another thing. It's like who's. Like it, it, we can think about how her daughter might influence her, but you can also think about well, what kind of values would she be imparting that her daughter would be doing this? I mean, and and obviously, as a parent, I don't want to go too far with that because you know, you, you never know. Um, but I, yeah, um, but I mean, but I mean, if you notice. Bernie Sanders' kids are, I mean, I don't want to make too much of this again, but they are yeah, yeah. Um, an advocate for the disabled, um, a um, progressive politician, um, a, um, a, a um, one of them runs a, a yoga studio. Like, that's the most capitalistic B- that's thing. That's the bougiest, but that's of them the all, bougiest right? thing yeah. any of them do is run a yoga studio. You know, I mean, yeah. so, so, so that's That would be a good question for Elizabeth right? Warren. I, I would, I would want to ask Elizabeth Warren, is your daughter rebelling against you or is this her carrying on your legacy? In some <laughs> right, way, right, right. And again, unfair in a way, but also... An interesting window on a you know, on, a, on an interesting window on a on a person and the milieu that they're in. Yeah, the, yeah, and I mean, like, well, the the Kamala Harris example, I think that's that's very illustrative because she's a person who is clearly just like either ignorant yeah. or cynical yeah. about policy stuff, like. Like she just like she just back and forth on Medicare for all over and over again. Now saying like we're going to implement it over ten years. It's like three presidential administrations. I mean, we'll all like, be dead you anyway. Me? You know, like, like clearly yeah, like, she's of, just of trying natural to natural causes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like what a re- yeah. yeah, yeah. All um, yeah. you know, on the on the other side, I mean, I think it's worth mentioning that um, you know. There was that big article, I think it was like Politico magazine, it was about how J- Jane Sanders r- was the oh, president uh-huh. of a college and she yes. just like fucked it up real bad yes. um, and ba- yes. basically destroyed the college. Uh, yeah. And, and um, you know, it's yeah. like a, a kind of tragic situation. It do- certainly doesn't like, like, like bear well on her specific management skills. Yeah. On the other hand, like it's hard to say what that has to do with like Bernie seemed mostly like confused about the situation, like like you know what's going on, and yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, and I also note that like when his son Levi was running for uh, was running for Congress, right? Yeah, Bernie yeah. didn't endorse him. Oh you know? yeah, yeah, <laughs> just yeah. like. Yeah. Sorry, buddy. You know, like <laughs> yeah. gonna have to you know s- swim and s- stand on your own two feet type of situation. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I, yeah. You know, I know wh- for a socialist, he's really he's clearly got an Andrew Carnegie style of parenting here. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Not, it just yeah. It, make your own way. <laughs> it would be improper or something, or it just doesn't yeah. agree with him. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, but it. Yeah. it I guess you know. When you're talking about these sort of influences, it it you you sort of at the end of the day, you're just sort of trying trying to decide whether your perception is that the candidate is, you know, like honest and straightforward or not. Like, are, are they, uh, you know, are they are they being straight with you about their commitments? Would they sacrifice their own, you know, livelihood or or you know, perhaps more realistically, in the case of like being president, just be like. Sorry, Jimmy, you're going to have to find a new job. Uh, being the son of a president, you'll find something, like I can guarantee you. Um, right, right, um, right. And so, you know, my sense for Warren is that, like, it's kind of in the middle-ish, but, like, I, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't say that, that like, 
her, you know, her, her association with that, with her, with her daughter is like dis disqualifying, like, like her proposals are not McKinsey proposals, right? No, 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 it's not exactly congruent, which is, which, which, which as, as you pointed out is why it's interesting, you know, it's like, it's, it's sort of, it's troubling, but it's not like, well, what would you expect? Um, Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And not oh, like then, their their book from from the what is it the two income trap, and yeah. That that I think is like quite indicative of like sort of early, Warren's early career, um, mm-hmm. and that like the analysis was like all wrong, like yeah. like yeah. but you know the de- the detailed investigation was sort of like on the right track, and it's yeah. just it, like Warren's very detail oriented. And like her, her moral instincts are, I think, pretty solid to say that like it's bad yeah. when there's injustice and people are suffering for no reason. Yeah. And the economic yeah. system is, is shit. But yeah. she's not like super systematic about the way that she perceives. So it's like it's very sort of whack a mole ish. But in that whacking, she's like right. pretty, you know, like she will take that hammer to Goldman Sachs. At least that's my perception. I think so that's, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think I think that's right. I think I, I I agree with I agree with your perception there. Um, just on the Jane Sanders, I do want to say something because the um, some of the most um, um, flack I got for that um, for the Jacobin column we were discussing um, was people saying, "Yeah, what about Jane Sanders?" And I was like, "That's has is just completely not." the subject because of the article because um it's she, um she th- that is not um like a small um failing college is not a corporation it's not like the same i mean like it, it's i it, it wasn't a column about everything everyone has ever done wrong who, who is right, associated right. Yeah. with someone yeah. running for president i mean it, it, it was it's a very specific piece about um corporate interests and class habitus um and that's what i was trying to um tr- trying to say but yeah people were very people are very animated about the jane sanders <laughs> issue yeah well and i think i think it's important to revisit the important point you made about this is not about corruption or conflict of interest as much as it's, it's really it's a, a Marxist, uh, maybe even more um, Gramscian yeah, understanding yeah. of, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Like, like, so your, your social relations and your, and your class location give rise to certain ideologies and ideas and how you understand the world and value the world. And if you don't understand how, like, you, people don't just form their beliefs in a vacuum, yeah. right? They, they come from somewhere. And yeah. so if we can understand where they came from, then we can better understand whether we can believe what they're saying. Or, or again, Elizabeth Warren might simply be confused. I think she's confused about the nature of capitalism, right? <laughs> she might think it's it's redeemable and it, like there's a good version of it out there. And, and like that might make sense given, right? And her daughter, maybe she thinks her daughter's doing a lot of good in the world with the work she's doing, right? Like th- these things can help us make sense uh you know it might help us make her statements cohere in some way yeah 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 i think i I think that's right um and i mean it's also you know there's uh candidates make a lot of their um origins um you know and um and and their biographies and and i think that you know that is interesting it's definitely um it's definitely interesting that elizabeth warren is from oklahoma and that her family was pretty poor um and it's it is interesting that um it's interesting that bernie um was from this poor immigrant family in um in in brooklyn um and um and the but but sometimes we overemphasize the origins and the past biography to and it, at the expense of well, what are their lives like now? Like in terms of who they're associating with, you know, and 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 it's it, yeah. and and it's clear that you know Amelia Tayagi has come a long way from, um, from 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 um pover- from Oklahoma poverty that her mother grew up in, um, and you know, good for them. I mean, I'm glad they're not still. I'm glad they're not still like in in that situation. Um, but it's um, but but it's. Um, the, but the 
um, the yeah. the way that people socialize each other and learn to think when they um, when 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 they're in those consultancies. And I mean, Warren herself, like when you're um, when you're a professor at a very um, like elite college. I mean, contrary to um, right wing propaganda, the um, the way that those people socialize each other. Um, is not very radical either, you know. I mean, the yeah. way that uh, it's, you know, it's more, it's more the Brett, it's more the Brett Kavanaugh way, actually. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's so uh, that's um, so. There's a lot of um, there, there's a lot of influences on her um, th- that you know I think are um, um, are um, not at um, not at odds with a kind of. Um, um, liberal sense that all is not right with the world, but could well be at odds with something um, more radical and transformative. Like that's there's just like a lot in her um, milieu um, to, to 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 discourage um, a person developing in that way, um, and um, you know I I actually don't really get why any socialist would support Elizabeth Warren. I think she's a really likable person. And I think she, again, I think she's a, a a really a good liberal, not a bad liberal, but you know, Bernie Sanders is in the race. He has, he is really popular and he's a socialist and, and he's like a really has a demonstrated ability to, um, to, persuade people to vote for him who might otherwise vote for Trump, which is, isn't that exactly what we would be looking for? I mean, both as socialists and just as people who um, don't want this reactionary, um, you know, um, sort of uh, like fascist light person in the White House. I mean, it just seems like like the that big tent of people who are socialists and people who are just kind of a, a, like against the far right. I mean, isn't it, it seems like that's that's what we would be looking for in a candidate. So yeah. um so it, so it, it's very it, it is very hard for me to understand um, why people would uh, why people who are actually socialists would be supporting Elizabeth Warren. But, you know, I don't want to be divisive. I think we should be polite about it. Um, but, but, but I do think I, I will just say, I, I, I think, I think it's odd and that they're um, wrong. Well, I, I think, mean, yeah. No, that, that's important. You yeah, know? Go ahead, go ahead, Ryan. The, yeah. I, I mean, I think that, that, that your attitude is probably broadly representative on the left. And I think it's very telling, yeah. you know, like, like the left, I, I think is fairly solidly behind Bernie. You know, there, there aren't that many socialists supporting Warren, but what you don't see is just an absolute dog pile on Warren, like there was on Hillary Clinton. Right. You know, pe- and I pe- think that's appropriate. That's yeah, I, don't think, yeah. I, don't, I don't think she should really be uh, the, the, um, at the bottom of a dog yeah, pile. Yeah, because, you know, <laughs> I, she I does wrote a, deserve criticism. Yeah. I, I wrote a column on this that, that just absolutely drove people up the wall. Um, <laughs> got, you know, got, got lots of clicks. <laughs> there was, it was the, the title was, um, like Elizabeth Warren is the person that Hillary Clinton pretended to be. Oh, that's and so true. I think that's, that's totally cor- true. Correct. Cause, cause where, you know, where she was cynically posturing as this sort of social justice, like devotee, you know, mouthing the, 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 uh, you know, the, the slogans of intersectionality and so on. Like Warren yeah. actually cares about all that stuff and oh, is yeah. like <laughs> sacrificed professionally in her life. Yeah. And, no, um, that's yeah. that is absolutely yeah. right. I think that she she really is she 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 really is the person that um that 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 Hillary Clinton pretended to be, and that Hillary Clinton's um many um media defenders and defenders <laughs> more broadly in the professional me- managerial class um convinced themselves that she was like yeah, they, yeah. They, they, yeah, they they yeah. they there was a f- a fantasy that Hillary was um was really this liberal who had de- de- dedicated herself to um the uplift of the less fortunate um and uh, you know and 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 that um and you know to some extent Elizabeth Warren really is that person and it is just utterly insane for people to claim that Hillary was there, that person. There is, no, it's uh, yeah. there, there's an interview on Frontline from, from, from many years ago 
where uh, Warren herself talks about when, um, you know, the notorious bankruptcy bill came up in the mid uh, mid 90s when Bill Clinton was president. And she talked to Hillary Clinton about it. Oh, yes. Like, Here's yes. why this is bad. X, Y, Z. And Hillary was like, oh, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Went back to the White House, convinced her husband to, to veto the bill. And that was yep. the end of it. Yep. Then that's right. When it comes up again, when Hillary was a senator, she voted for it. Despite yes. knowing for a fact that everything, you know, all the same shit was still in there. Yeah. And Warren's like, well, there's a lot of financial interests in New York City. And they're, you know, and they they have a lot of, play, you know, and it was like basically like sort of sort of talking around the fact that like she fucking got bought off, you know. Yes. And that and yeah. and that's a and, thing and, that, and, the, you know, a lot of people really dislike Warren for that, for pointing that out for, for in that and many other contexts, just being like. Yeah, these uh, these people are basically corrupt, you know. Yeah, and, and look, it's a it's a spectrum, right? Because like Warren was shrewd in the sense that she endorsed Hillary Clinton because she thought that was what was good for her because she thought Hillary was going to win the election, um, and, and and a lot of people felt that that was a betrayal of Bernie. Um, but on the other hand, in the debate uh, when that total toolbox John Delaney. Uh, was on stage and w Warren just said, I don't really understand why you'd go out to all the trouble for running for president just to say what you can't do and you won't fight for. Like, yes. That, that was a beautiful moment. Yeah, and totally. I think that was true. Like, I think she does believe that. I think she does think she's just very confused about capitalism. Right. But like she, I think is fighting actually for certain principles at, you know, in contrast to, I remember when Hillary was debating Bernie in, in Michigan in Flint, Michigan, and like there was a fracking question about fracking in Flint, Michigan. Right, right. And I could I could just see her in her head triangulating, like, what do I say here? How is it gonna pull? And I swear to God, and I'm a professor, I had no idea what her answer meant. Like she purposefully gave an answer where you couldn't divine what in the world her position on fracking was. Yeah. And this was in in Flint, Michigan. She yeah. couldn't stand up. For, for yeah. right, like yeah, so, so yeah. There's some ways where they're very, very different. Right? Very, yeah, no, and 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 that's that's a good example. Like, um, I, I, I knock on wood, but I, I don't think you could really imagine Warren, um, having ha having such a, a bad answer to um a, to, to a question like that. Although, um, we should, um, it, it's it it's actually really um, it's it's kind of under i think underreported or at least under obsessed about how bad democrats are on fracking in general i oh, mean God. like, like it, Jesus, i mean no. if 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 you want to stop fracking you should basically only um, be supporting Bernie Sanders. Um, but I mean, but presidential politics aside, it's yeah. I mean, this in um, I mean, in New York State, we have um, the um, the the Cuomo administration um, has just had so many um, f um, industry people in their administration. They're just like like there have just been been direct payoffs, revolving doors that don't even fully revolve where you know the people kind of stay in the government and yeah. they keep lobbying for the industry or like i mean it's just um i mean it's 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 just it's just astounding and a and 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 fracking is is one of those issues that um basically everyone who does who doesn't directly profit from it opposes it because everyone is against um, everyone is against the worsening of climate change and the poisoning of water, um, but um, but but there are there are just so many like outright profiteers that are deeply embedded in in the Democratic Party, and um, and so you know it's something that you have you kind of have to keep a close watch on all of them about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. What do you think about the the, the donor commitments that the um, I'm willing to let big donors donate in the general and and kind of. The, the way that we should think about how that is a betrayal of principle or not, or, or if you just need to finance your general election campaign. I mean, is, is Warren somebody that we should be more suspicious of because of campaign finance issues or, or not, do you think? Yeah, I mean, I kind of think that that's um, a, another sign that she is, you know, it's, it's again, it's a contrast um, between um, um, someone like Bernie who does not get any 
um, big do any any donors uh, like of this kind um, and um, or any corporate money um, or any billionaires um, and um, um, and someone like Warren who's really um, a, a, got a fairly traditional donor base for a politician for a national politician so it's like on the one hand I mean you don't want to single her out because business as usual is just so terrible but you do need to single her out if you are specifically comparing her to Bernie Sanders Bernie. <laughs> then you, right. you then you need to say look um he is really doing some he his the, this campaign is very grassroots when you look at how it is actually financed um and Elizabeth Warren um, was for getting big money before she was against it, to use the um, the cliche, <laughs> you know. I mean, and That's and cute. and she's still using the money from when she was for it, you know. So she's very materially not against it, like yeah, I mean, the, you know. This, <laughs> so this is an interesting question, though, because like the the um, <clears throat> it maybe brings up like what you might call a virtuous cynicism. Um, mm -hmm. that, that I think used to be much more common than it, than it is today, uh, which, which is, um, maybe encapsulated in, in, in this, this quote from former California, uh, uh, treasurer, Jesse Unruh, who said, um, if you can't eat their food, drink their booze, screw their women, and then vote against them, you have no business being up here, which is in, you know, like the state legislature. Or right, right. Henry Clay Frick talking about uh, Theodore Roosevelt um, and his, like, you know, incipient antitrust stuff. Uh, he, sa he says, we bought the son of a bitch, and then he didn't stay bought, <laughs> right? And so, you know... Yeah. Yeah. Because you you have you there's like one layer of cynicism to be to to be you know put like what you might just say like like raw political cynicism like what is my balance of advantage here mm -hmm. to be like mm -hmm. okay I'm gonna get in office and then I'm gonna like break all my promises and give tons of money to my friends and then I'm gonna cash out for myself personally or you could say like which I think it would be you know m more appropriate in times of extreme inequality like the Gilded Age. Or like today to be like, well, I'm going to solicit some donations from people. I mean, I don't think Warren's doing like big dollar fundraising, you know, now, but she, but she has done in the right. past. But right. but um, just to be like, yeah, I'll take their money and then I'm going to stab them in the back anyways, you know, because like like that that money is not worth, you know, like I will not do favors for them because stat, you know, just like shanking them is still worth doing even if i won't get that money in the future and like ideally you know you could do your millionaire's tax or whatever just like regulate the piss out of wall street and then like there is no money for somebody else in the next election but you know <laughs> well, that so would obviously be great um <laughs> you know, wouldn't, wouldn't that, I mean, we can dream <laughs> yeah, that, we can dream yeah. can't we <laughs> I, I mean, I, but you know, that's what ma mainstream Democrats always say that when uh, when you point to their donors and their like their you know like and and their you know their you know presence at the Hamptons garden parties and all that stuff they they always say well you haven't established that this affects my policies in any way and um, and 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 they, they so, and they always they always say that and it's kind of almost a, a talking point of the big money democrat and um and it, it's um and it's it's like well first of all like the entire condition of our society um, is, is, is evidence that, um, that, um, allowing people, allowing corporate interests and the rich to just give you money doesn't work very well for everybody else and does affect right. your policies. Um, but I mean, even it's like, even if it's not point by point, you exactly, uh, the system, in, it, it, it certainly does affect the, the system in general. But second of all, you almost always can, um, point to a link. I mean, they say that they're not going to be influenced by these donors, and then um, and then they they usually are. But sometimes the more interesting question to ask. I mean, although all of that is really important, um, you know how how the big donors are going to to influence them, and they and you know um, many 
Um, many, many journalists more knowledgeable on that issue than I have written extensive books about that. Um, but um, sometimes the even more interesting question is, why do these donors want to support that person? You know, I mean, so going back to your man Gramsci, I mean, that's like, what's the ruling class up to when it makes a certain decision? I mean, and or what are particular factions of the ruling class up to with that? And, um, and so it's like, they can claim all they want that this is not going to influence them. But, um, but the, a, a, a big donor's decision to um, support Elizabeth Warren, you have to ask, what do they see in her? What do they think is in it for them? Because they're certainly not um, begging, um, knocking down Bernie's door, begging him to make an exception and take their money, <laughs> you know, or trying to contribute to him through the small, through the limit, yeah. you know, like, you know, if they wanted to support um, a truly left candidate, um, but they are not doing that um there so so what what is what what is it about elizabeth warren that they have decided it's in their interest to support her um and um and or same with um, pete Buttigieg, another um, very popular um on the uh, on the big donor uh, circuit and and it's like yeah. and that's that's a less interesting question because it like obviously he's kind of a neoliberal and the neoliberals love him yeah. but um, but right. so that's he, that he, he can he can say he can say a neoliberal in seven languages though Did you know that he I can know. say it. it's, it's very impressive <laughs> that's very right. impressive maltese norwegian um, but the <laughs> um, but 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 as far as the elizabeth warren i mean I, you, you have to be a little bit i mean um there's a uh um i mean i i don't i don't know to i don't think it's necessarily a um a real conspiracy but i think there's a um a tendency by the ruling class to think oh maybe uh, maybe if we help elizabeth warren out um it will weaken bernie and i think that that is something they would they would really love to see they would really love to see um bernie um, like lose this nomination, but but this 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 may be like a broader question though I think because I think that move used to be much more common than it is today, which you know which is to say taking the money and then stabbing them in the back anyways. The, the, the class you know, trader move, yeah, right? the, like FDR, our yeah. best president. He, yeah. you know, he was a rich rich guy, just just yes. swaddled in privilege for his Absolutely. entire life. And Have you ever been to his house? I, Hyde, I, Hyde Park? I want to visit someday. Highly, highly recommend. It's a, we yeah, should all it's, go. It, it, it's, all it, go. It, it, it's really amazing. We should do a podcast from there. Yeah. It's yeah. like, I mean, it, it's like, it's a great idea. Oh my God. The, um, I mean, you can see like the, 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 the dumb waiter where he used to pull himself up in it. So his guests wouldn't know that he was too, crippled to climb the stairs uh, like wow. i mean i mean it, like there's it, there's just a lot of there's a lot of really intense stuff but yes on your point he's was clearly very very privileged yeah. it's a, it, it's quite immense well and yeah. in and in his early very early presidency he tried to be you know a balance wheel you know of politics to sort of adjudicate between capital and labor rather than pick between them but mm -hmm. when capital was like fuck you fdr I don't, you know, I want everything. Then he said, fine, fuck you too. I'm thrown yeah. in with the workers. And yeah. then he, you know, he made that like just a, you know, just ditched all of his like class baggage. And so far as he had any, and it was, and, you know, it was like railing just savagely against the money power and, and they hated yeah. him for it. The, yeah. That man in the yeah. White House. Right. Yeah. And so like, yeah. what? Where did that go? You know, what happened to people so that, that there was nobody in the ruling, not a single person that I can think of who has done that kind of thing, gone from the top shelf of, you know, the ruling class into, you know, just like a sort of, you know, fire breathing populace. Well, and now, Ryan, Bernie is not like that, of course, but he did get some attacks about hypocrisy. He's worth a million dollars or something, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, which, he which for book. someone, <laughs> right, right? Like, cause he wrote a book that made some money. So, but like, but, but there was a, a response to that, which was like, yeah, being a class trader is awesome. That's all the more mm -hmm. like a, a display of his integrity. Right. So, mm -hmm. so that, that complicates, I think our discussion like a little bit and we have to distinguish between oh, yeah. when, 
right? Yeah, no, uh, no, no, absolutely. No, and um, I should say I'm of the professional managerial class myself. Um, I, I like I, this is partly why I Me know because I see this all the time. I see I see how ideological a formation it is. But 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 it's true. Like it, it it's it's not our our class position and location is not determinative. Um, and um, and and FDR is a, an amazing example of that. Um, I, however, I mean, without taking away, I mean, he's he's clearly a phenomenal person, but um, it's also um, it's also what was going on in the country in the larger picture at that time. I mean yeah. that um, um, there was a um, th- there was a a very thriving and organized communist party. Um, people were also there was tremendous hardship and people were furious. I mean, you know, there there's just like, um, like it, it, it there was just sort of the social forces for um demanding that kind of um of of really um serious um economic change. Um, were 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 in force and and he rose to the occasion but i i don't um i i don't i mean you know we can't we we can't say for sure but it it seems um it's it seems like one of those instances where um the social forces help produce that person oh um, absolutely you yeah, know yeah. and um and nice. and so you know i mean who knows like uh, like elizabeth uh, president elizabeth warren I mean, with the rising socialist movement, you know, which I mean, and um, and like and, you know, people in the street um, and, you know, a a lot of different forces changing um, might be similar to that. You know, we like we don't like we don't actually know. I mean, and and, I mean, and and it does sort of come down to as much as, um, um, you know, it is. It, it is important and interesting to examine these individuals, but it is even more important to um, build up our movements. I mean, yeah, that's, yeah. Just that, that, that's, that's a, what really creates them. Yeah. No, I think- well, lest we, for, lest we forget the, you know, Kane, Keynes and FDR were explicitly trying to save capitalism because if they, mm-hmm. in their own minds, didn't do what they did, it was going to be either the left or the right and, and capitalism was bye-bye gone, you know? And so it, it's, it, it was definitely a reformist project in, in, in some ways, I, I would say. And, and Warren probably is thinking the same way, maybe. Um, and I think we would rather push things even more left. But, we, you know, we had Rich Yesselson on here. And to your question, why would a socialist um, support Warren? There's a lot of social Democrats who I, – and I think like – under capitalism right now, people who identify as social democrats or socialists are – it's a little tricky because we're so far away from evil, even social democracy that like the big battle between socialists yeah. and social, social democrats is a little off in the future, it, it right? Seems, yeah. I, I, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so, so, so you have Rich coming on here and he's like, you know what? He, he had his line. Remember, Ryan, what it was? It was something about like Bernie is the tree shaker and Warren is the jelly maker, which yeah. whatever he, he was, you know, he was, he was trying to say that she would be the one that would know actually what to do in office and actually be able to make the changes that could move us in that direction. And so like whether you're socialist or social democrat, there are some people maybe who where we are today are picking the reformist. For some reasons like that, maybe I don't, I'm trying to come up with a devil advocate position. I mean, so. a lot of people who do a lot of policy work um, tend to um, really um, fetishize that expertise and, and be like, you, you know, the, like Elizabeth Warren has actually made policy, and you know, Bernie's just been uh, railing from the sidelines, and which is also not fair to Bernie. But um, but yeah. but I but I but I think there's a kind of. Uh, um, there, there is, there is kind of again, again with this, with, with this professional managerial class um, demographic, there's such a, um, a f- um, obsession with um, expertise and um, and technic- technical no technocratic know how, and honestly, that's not really what a president does. I mean, a, a president um, appoints people to do all that stuff. You know, that's right. I Absolutely. mean, I, like a, a president finds the people that know the most about making policy in that area and and and, and puts them in place. Like like that's. Yeah. I mean, it, the, the, it's great that she has all that knowledge, but um and uh, but it's it's not um it, it, the, 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 there there's a little bit of a um 
I, I think it, it reflects the um it, it reflects the lingering attachments of um her fan base to um that kind of technocracy technocratic as, uh, approach to politics and um you know politics is not really that politics is like knocking on doors and telling people how you're going to change their lives you know and how you are going to work together with them to change their lives you know i mean that's that's really um, what it is, and um, and that's um, uh, and yeah, I mean, <laughs> the risk of sounding too propagandistic. Bernie Sanders is the only person who is going to do that. Um, and I, I was going to say, I could just imagine, as a side note, I can just imagine all my my Twitter trolls will come after me and and be like, <laughs> Liza Featherstone said President Elizabeth Warren might be the next FDR. <laughs> like, <laughs> so just for all. <laughs> <laughs> for, 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 for all you uh, um, trolls out there, um, that's not the full context of this I, interview. That's the story. I, think yes. that's, I think that's, uh, that's actually a fair prediction, you know? Um, I mean, that is literally what, if, if people listen to this whole interview, <laughs> I promise you somebody is going to accept that. And then the yeah, next, the the next, the next statement Paul was, and that's not good like, enough for her. She's not happy with FDR. That's not good enough for Liza. Oh yeah, there will be that too. Yeah, right, right, that's, that that's gonna, yeah, 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 totally. But it's like there's always gonna be a contingent that's gonna be mad that you were too nice about Elizabeth Warren, and then there's yeah. gonna be a yep. contingent. That oh yeah, can't win. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I do think that's probably <laughs> true, though that 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 <laughs> her and FDR are the most similar in their <laughs> sort of basic politics, right? I know. FDR, I know. I know. That's true. FDR mm -hmm. is also a very unsystematic guy. He doesn't yeah. really care that much about ide ideology or like political economy. Yeah. Like he is just yeah. a sort of mm -hmm. vector of power. Yeah. And mm -hmm. in his circumstance, when it was like we have to, we have to just like s smash the the ruling class or like beat it like quite severely about the head and and face uh he did that you know yeah and i yeah. and that that is why he yeah. was, was the best president i would say absolutely um, but you know there there was a lot of you know bullshit ideology in in the way that like like the way he did social security right where yeah. it's like oh we're going to do a retirement thing but like you have to pay into it before you've ever you've you, you can receive anything so yeah the first, you know, the first direct effect of that was to just suck uh, spending and demand out of the economy and like like make the depression slightly worse, you know, yeah. just so that you could pretend as if you were making a savings program and what you're doing is a welfare program. Like, yeah. come on, FDR, <laughs> like this. Yeah, this is stupid. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, that, you know, um, she. I think that Warren is kind of right there you know and in and being like a kind of critic of the status quo but not a not a revolutionary we've never mm -hmm. had any you know any kind of a revolutionary president maybe you could say with lincoln but that's like a specific you know like the slavery thing makes that very you know like contingent but in terms of well, like the basic the structure slavery of... thing is pretty important and um and actually right, and sure. Karl Karl Marx wrote Lincoln a fan letter um yeah. a, a, about um right. yeah cuz um he he thought he was a great president um, and um and um specifically because the um slavery was the end of slavery in the United States was um, both the most massive step toward greater human freedom that um, uh, that a society had taken, um, and um, uh, under capitalism at that point, and um, and also um, the you know, and you can't separate these two things. Um, the most massive um, redistribution, um, yes. yeah, um, right. like taking property away from the rich and literally giving it to the poor in the form of them own, their own selves, <laughs> like in the form yes, of their yes, own freedom, yes. I mean, and their own wage labor. And so that was extreme. That was actually even more revolutionary than anything that, um, that, that FDR did. Um, although in yes, his, that's true. in his way of thinking about things and in the sort of claims he made about what he was doing and the sort of, um, you know, 
um, the the sort of moderate um, way that he often um, spoke, um, Lincoln was obviously much less radical than FDR. So, but but, but yeah, I think I, I think it's it, it's they're they're kind of a uh, um, they're they're kind of neck and neck. For, um, yeah, for yeah, being yeah. No, pretty, no, defi- um, yeah. pretty good presidents, De- um, definitely Lincoln number two by like a very a- sh- very short margin, and, and I, th- I just think that d- the difference is that you know Lincoln ended up in this situation where the like basically the only choice was to get rid of slavery, and he right. did that, and it was like just right. a, you know incredible stroke of of you know uh, against the horrible despotism that existed in his day. yes what yes. he didn't do though was set up a uh you know s- sustainable political economy for the political coalition that no. that, yeah. that backed you know be, his freedom to project be fair, he got shot to be fair yes that's exactly <laughs> yeah, what i was gonna right? say Lars. i was he that's what shot. i was gonna say that's, <laughs> yeah. i have this exactly same point i was like right no he did fair, he uh, yes killed. no he was killed by man. white Come supremacists on. who wanted to stop him from doing exactly that yeah. oh like, give him like, a break <laughs> ryan he was literally assassinated, man. This, Come on. No, like, I, I, I'm like, aware. I'm listen. This is like I'm Trump aware. on McCain. I like people who weren't shot. <laughs> you know, if he hadn't, if he had dodged the bullet like Neo in the Matrix, right? Like Daniel Lincoln could not fly could jets worth a worth a damn. <laughs> but 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 I no I I think going back. You, Going back to my point, though, that you know, Lincoln was all about free labor we, we, ideology. We are, we are still listening. We free are, labor true. ideology, right? Which is yeah. like you you yes. free the slaves and you give mm-hmm. you know you you you, prov- you provide them you know with the sort of like democratic liberties and so on. He was not in his life, you know. Maybe he maybe he would have done after if he had lived longer, but he didn't during his life. He never said like we need to reconfigure. The economic institutions uh, and right, the people absolutely. that that yeah. followed in his footsteps, following that free labor ideology, like that, just folded in on itself in yes. like a decade. Yes. Um, you know, yes. when you, no, you're, you're the you're crisis right. of of 1873, when your yeah. capitalist institutions like crashed in on themselves, and that just like destroyed the political economy of Reconstruction, and the Republicans couldn't do anything about it because they had no they had no realistic way to like cement in. That's the mm-hmm. thing that that FDR did, with, you know, at least for you know a few decades, mm-hmm. um, in his very unsystematic way. But like, you know, with his combination of like antitrust regulation and unions, that was a like a fairly sustainable way to like order the political economy of the U.S. Yeah, and that's it, it that's, was a dur- and it was a durable coalition for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. the point. But, but- but Ryan, I think there's a st- like Bernie Sanders could definitely be the most radical president from any perspective. Yeah. In, in one sense, particularly if you think about why he and Warren are so different on foreign policy, and it's ideological, right? Like That's there's true. a reason that Bernie Sanders links the class struggle here to like the Palestinians to uh, all these international f- fights against oppression. Yeah. Because he he understands. That socialism is a global problem, actually, as against global capitalism. And that would be a total, like, you can even see it in Elizabeth Warren and her Green New Deal stuff. Mm -hmm. She doesn't care about, like, labor aristocracy or the, or the South, the global South, right? Like, it's not, uh, her policies aren't necessarily bound up with the essential class struggle that's global. Uh, and that doesn't bleed into her foreign policy like it does for Bernie, I would say. I don't know. And that would be a very radical way to try to make meaning and, and like cohere the domestic and foreign policy approaches, right? The, 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 this 2020 cycle, Bernie, is way more interesting on foreign policy than 2016 Bernie. Yeah. It's, um, I mean, it's like his his lifetime of being a leftist, like going back to like before he was a Senator has, has like, he's just letting it all out. (laughs) I mean, or, 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 or or he's learned or whatever. I mean, but, uh, but, 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 but whatever it is, it's really, 
I mean, it's 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 really been um, it's really been interesting, and it's um, it's no surprise he's so popular among Muslim voters, um, for example. Yep. I mean, it's like uh, because he's he he really is the. He he really is the internationalist. So people whose lives are global and who are, whose families are really affected by um, by 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 global events are um, are are really looking at Bernie. I would something I would add. Um, you know, as we're talking, as we're thinking about um, um, FDR and social forces. Um, I mean, thinking about the way Elizabeth Warren is. Um, you know the the way that she she seems to get more and more liberal you know and um and and in you know as we've said sort of complicated and confusing ways but um but but interesting i mean the um you know like she just came out with this great social security plan um i haven't looked at it very carefully it's not my expertise but it it seems it seems very like a lot of steps forward there um it's. I, I don't think anyone could possibly um, imagine that that would happen. I, I don't think anybody should try to claim that that would happen if Bernie were not in the race. Um, and the social forces that are empowered by Bernie being in the race, um, in turn, um, you know, bring that pressure for a candidate like Warren to be so much better. So, I mean, you know, I, I know that... Um, that, you know, my, um, my other brand of trolls <laughs> will probably say, um, will, 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 will probably say, oh, that's you know really sexist. You know, you're attributing her, like the greatness of Elizabeth Warren to a man. Um, okay, but um, but hear me out. Um, the um, it, it is. I mean, it, like the um, there is really a dynamic between um, Bernie Sanders, the forces that he encourages um, in. Um, the um, the United States, which has um, you know been a um, a pretty conservative place for a long time, um, and um, and the sort of you know when you see um, Elizabeth Warren getting better and better, I think that that's um, it, it's she, she's she's a really good example of um, how the good liberal is in some ways produced by um, more leftward forces. Um, yeah. And and thanks to Bernie, we have more. Le- I mean, you know, not not all thanks only to Bernie. He's not the only factor, but he's a really important factor in why we have um, um, some robust leftward forces right now. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You don't you don't get the great president FDR without, you know, John L. Lewis and, mm-hmm. you know, the uh, you know, the, the 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 prayer career of Eugene Debs and, and so mm-hmm. on and so forth. Um, and yeah, I think that's true that, you know, you, you need in any case to have, uh, a, a, you know, figureheads and social movements, you know, to be pushing that, you know, ideological and, and policy envelope such that, Mm -hmm. uh, whether, you know, However, the, the 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 race turns out that um, even you know the Biden platform. There was a there was an article the other day in McClatchy, which got a lot of crap, but I think it's correct in empirical terms that the Biden platform is way to the left of the Hillary Clinton platform. Oh, and, yeah, and it's probably going to continue to be. Yeah, um, yeah, and yeah. and you know whether or not he will do that, that's a different question. Yeah. But it's yeah. certainly the case that like the 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 dialogue and the debate around this has changed so far from from twenty fifteen, and yeah. that right. you know if there if you could if you could, had to pin it on one person, Bernie would be that person. Like he yeah. he has moved things so much, um, and in the way that you know. As as like Trotsky says, like the 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 the, you know, it's the the steam and the piston that does the work. But he was sort of like the factor right. that crystallizes stuff that 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 was already there. But you know, he 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 put a name to it and made people. Mm-hmm. He un- capitalized. You know, he capitalized on the Occupy. Like it's a process. There's yeah. lots of like st- stops and starts and lots of things that are that are moving us forward. But he certainly crystallized and represented a, a big part of the left, and that's really important. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, you know, what what do we do though when we see all these articles about Elizabeth Warren 
that say, well, it seems like the donor class is settling on her because maybe they realize we have to satiate this this leftist kind of populist movement. Maybe we can get away with Elizabeth Warren. And, and as you said, Liza, maybe that's to just not get Bernie the nomination, but maybe they think we can control her in office or maybe we can get her to say the right things that, that pacify people, but actually our interests will still be served, right? Like that's a danger. Oh, I think so. I mean, I, I, I think, it, you know, it's... It, it's it's likely that they'd they'd probably like to see um her getting um her getting some of bernie's support and um you know and you know them splitting the vote they probably also wouldn't mind seeing an elizabeth warren presidency if the alternative were bernie i'm sure they'd much rather see biden but maybe right, but, but, but maybe yeah. you're right that it could be more subtle than that <laughs> like maybe they i mean i i don't think that we're we on the left are yet powerful enough that the ruling class is in a place where like if right. they had got to choose all of them by themselves, they would really rather Elizabeth Warren be president than Bernie. But sure. I think we'd have to be right. a little more powerful than that. But you know, maybe, maybe, um, maybe, maybe, maybe that's the case. Um, but uh, but yeah, again, I think I, I think the way that we respond to those articles is um, is is in part, you know, we just like have to keep asking. Um, what do they like about her? And kind of, I think, yeah. I think it's, it's important to continue to raise that question and saliently, what don't they like about Bernie and why is that good for everybody else? Like, and yeah. you know, yeah. like what, like that, like, Absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. And it's not just that he's a white male. That's not actually the reason, <laughs> right? Right. No, it's not. <laughs> um, the, um, um, Billionaires and, hate white men. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it is. They're, it's, they're very they're very happy with the other version of the old white man in Biden. They're very happy with him for some reason, right? Yes. And they, Pete they Buttigieg. Are, I'm I'm actually um I was thinking the other day that um I thought that um I, I thought that there was going to be um some kind of um woke and anti-sexist anti-racist argument for biden and i haven't heard it yet <laughs> so, so i just, just want to say that that is a discursive um piece of people that, working piece on of, it piece of insanity that um <laughs> that i anticipated that has not come to pass so, so that's that's encouraging <laughs> so. that's a that's a tough uh, tough road to road to hoe as they might say <laughs> It, um, it, it it is, but you know you can't underestimate the 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 the, the democratic um, propaganda the creativity, machine. <laughs> the, the creativity, creativity of the, the the ruling class is yeah. amazingly creative. Yeah, and coming yeah. up with ideological stances to protect their interests. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, well, that's, this uh, has been wonderful, Eliza. Yeah. Do, do you have any any uh, last thoughts or anything else you, you think we should we should dive into this? Yeah. Anything really to helpful. plug? Uh, do oh do I have anything to plug? Um, no, not not yeah. I mean, I do. I I have I, I have I have a thing coming out that I'm excited about. But, breaking uh, but news. I, but I, okay. No, well, it's not breaking uh, yeah. news. It's just like a. I have a big fat essay coming out that I'm excited about. Oh, cool. Um, cool. So, do you want Do you want to talk about it? Or no, is it too early? no, no. I don't want to talk okay. about it. Okay. Okay. Not yet. <laughs> no, well, not yet. <laughs> keep, maybe keep, maybe I'll come back after. Yeah. Yeah. I can come back another time. Keep Keep your eyes see. peeled for N S A. By Eliza Featherstone. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, um, I have an essay um, coming out in the New Republic. It's ah. about it's about feminism, and it's called "Why Do They Hate Us?" So ah, excellent, wonderful, Great. absolutely. Well, well, we will link to all of your things, mm -hmm. and everyone should buy mm -hmm. the books defined or not defined as a book, <laughs> or authored or not authored by yeah. you alone, yeah. and definitely follow you on Twitter, definitely read all your articles, yeah. and you should hopefully definitely come back and talk to us again. I'd, I'd, love, I'd love to. It was a total pleasure. A lot of fun. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. See you next right. time. See you, everyone. Last but not least, we have a friendly reminder that we have a Patreon. You can support the show with $5 a month and get an extra episode every week. Uh, we really appreciate the support, and it helps us keep this going. Yeah, I'm from Utah. I'm the strong, stupid type, and... Um... <laughs>